Good morning. Good morning, River of Life. I hope you all are doing well. Um, it is a gloomy Tuesday morning, um, and I'm excited to be uh, sharing Dave's Devos with you. I'm sharing uh, a quick devotion that um, has been on my heart and something that I put together here this morning, and I felt like the Lord was speaking to me. So um, we're going to be in James 1 and 2 today. Um, we're going to start right off on uh, verse 2 of chapter 1, and I'm just going to read through to verse 8. Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of, of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. If any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God, who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to you. But when you ask, you must believe and not doubt, because the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea, blown and tossed by the wind. That person should not expect to receive anything from the Lord. Such a person is double-minded and unstable in all they do. Now, I, I was reading through that today, and honestly, this chapter in my Bible is, highlights all throughout it because I, I just love I love the 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 sincerity that Paul speaks over these these passages especially when he talks through um, whenever you face trials of many kinds because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance just just that little snippet right there you can imagine Paul um, maybe being beaten abused for his faith walking miles and miles between cities to share the gospel and yet, um, he's excited about it. He's excited about the faith that it produces, the righteousness that it produces in him for that perseverance. Um, but I love this part, and, and the, the thing that's catching my mind this morning is, is verse 8. So James chapter 1, verse 8, where it says, Such a person is double-minded and unstable in all their ways. And he's saying this in reference to um, the idea of when you ask, for something, you ask for faith from the Lord. You ask for um, strength to persevere throughout trials and tribulations, but then you don't believe that that is so. You don't believe that He's going to give it to you, and when you don't believe, um, you're nothing more than a wave that's blown by the sea, or someone whose emotions are going from one way to the other. Oh yes, the Lord's going to strengthen me, and then no longer are you strengthened if you don't believe that He's going to do so. Um, so as he brings my attention to that, I, I just want you guys, um, those hearing this, to to take the opportunity to just ask the Lord, where where are are we not believing that you will provide? Um, the church in the U.S., you know, we have to wear masks to services. We have to, um, in some places, not gather in the same groups. I know that larger churches maybe can't meet because of in-person orders and all these different rules put out by Governor Walls and and uh, other governors within states, but the persecution is nothing like the persecution that the churches overseas face when um, they're not allowed to meet at all under penalty of prison or death or anything like that. Um, and yet we can still um, empathize in some way now with them and that, that these challenges that we're facing is causing us all to grow in one way or another. It, as ministries, it's causing us to do things like this. We're, we're doing devotions every day with the church and, and providing a resource and, and just sharing in the word with you. Um, and I think even just that is, is growing and challenging us and creating a culture of perseverance through tri trials, tribulations, um, situations where we maybe don't feel the most comfortable. And it's drawing us closer to Jesus ultimately. And I think, I think that that's, that's maybe what God is trying to speak through this this craziness of a time that we're that we're experiencing something that hasn't happened for hundreds of years, but it, it's it's this mentality and this idea that um, the the religion that that God that God accepts as pure and faultless is is simply to look after orphans and widows in their distress to keep oneself from being polluted by the world. So that's James chapter. 1 verse um, 27, that very vast last part, 
And yes, I know that's that's a little bit different than what I'm talking about right now, but but the concept still being the same. That that the religion that he accepts isn't isn't gathering and, and meeting and all of these different places. Yes, those things are important. Yes, that strengthens our faith. And yes, that draws us closer to each other. And, and iron sharpens iron and we grow closer to Jesus. But at the same time, maybe what God is looking to, to point us to here are the things that will, that will pull us closer to him. And then the things that he wants, wants us to pour out in that way. And maybe that just looks like something like this, from me taking a little bit of my morning or you taking a little bit of your morning and, and giving of yourself in some way. Um, an example I can think of is I, I have this cart and I pull up the groceries with it um, from our car when we go because we live on the third floor of an apartment. It's, it's a little bit of a walk and it would be next to impossible without some sort of bin for the groceries because we get uh, just a grocery order every two weeks or something. So there's not a ton, just me and my wife, but um, we do have some, right? And we uh, have this cart, and I put the groceries in a box, and then I pull it up all the way up the elevator and through the thing. Um, but when I'm going down to get the groceries, I come across this Somali lady, and um, she's just a younger lady, very capable, um, but she's trying to move this big TV to the back of her car, and she can't get it. It's just taking her forever. She said it took her 20 minutes just to get the TV to um her car so i just put my arms around it i mean it was easy for me i just put my arms around it lifted it up put it in her car for her, and i couldn't believe what happened next i felt really awkward but <laughs> um she followed me to the same walmart went in with the tv exchanged it for a different one while i was picking up my groceries and it took me 15 20 minutes to pick up my groceries it felt like an inconvenience i was kind of disappointed i had somewhere to be afterwards um but I picked up the groceries and I pull out of the parking lot and she's literally behind me. So she had had time to go and get a new TV and everything while I was waiting for my grocery pickup to come out of Walmart. And she follows me like directly behind me all the way back to Walmart now or all the way back to our apartment, which is just five to seven minutes. But she follows directly behind me the whole time. And when we get there, she opens her truck up. She's got this TV and I put all my groceries in the cart and I'm just like ready to wheel it up there. And I kind of looked over my shoulder and part of me felt like I was going to kind of giggle. I was like, oh, this is kind of funny. Like, I don't need to stop and, and help her. Like, I, I have the card. I'm, I'm just more convenient for me. Um, but then I thought, oh, what a great opportunity to share um, just love and care of a human to a human. And, and in my mind, yes, it was thinking, oh, like, I can share the love of Christ with this, with this woman. But um, I knew that just the, the good gesture would be something that would mean a lot to her. So I uh, pulled my card out and, and I put her TV on it and then I put my groceries on it. And we just both went up the elevator. We didn't really say anything to each other. Went all the way down to her apartment on the third floor, which was actually even further away than mine was. And uh, I lifted the TV up and dropped it off. And she said, thank you so much. Like this would have taken me 30 minutes. Like I don't even know how I would have done it. Um, and then I just pulled my groceries over to the, to my apartment and, and I, I just felt the joy in my heart. I was, I was excited about it. I was like, wow, that was really easy and f like fun. It was fun, fun to do something like that. So if you don't know me, I mean, I'm, I'm always passionate about worship, about pursuing God in, in, uh, corporate settings. And, and I love doing church with each one of you every Sunday. And I love leading and working with students on Wednesday nights. Um, but, but that's not what God's maybe looking for in this time. Maybe right now he's looking to pull us closer so that we're getting in the word every day with our families, with ourselves. If you, if you live alone, then maybe it's just you that you need to just get in the word. Or maybe you need to um, get on a video call, something like this, and talk to your family about, about what you're reading in the Bible, what the pastor was talking about. Um, I don't know what it is for you, but I know that God has something specifically ordained for this moment in time. And I think just, just this last part um, that I want to talk about is that I know these times are really stressful for a lot of people, um, whether it's the election coming up or um, issues and just humanity in general. It, it's it's not, not an easy, easy time to just kind of float on by and live your life. 
and I get that. And I know maybe I'm speaking from inexperience being uh, the young, young kid on here talking about it, but, but uh, it's something that's, that's been challenging me because I do too get frustrated when I see things on the media and things that happen and um, lived in Minneapolis for a few years. So when the city was burning down, I, I was frustrated. I was angry. But I was reminded of this passage during those times, and I'm reminded of it again um, in James 1. And halfway through uh, verse 19, he starts and says, Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. Because human anger does not produce the righteousness that God desires. So let's just stop right there. That's through verse 20. Human anger does not produce the righteousness that God desires. It's that simple. It's that simple. We just need to slow down a little bit. We just need to slow down and listen. Be slow to speak and quick to listen. Slow to become angry. Because that anger that we feel inside, unless it's righteous anger from God over something um, that his heart hurts for, like injustice, it's not anger that pleases God or produces righteousness in us. And it won't go back, in, going back to that, what we talked about right away, it won't produce um, that wisdom and that, gener that generosity and the faith um, that would lead us through times like these. So then he goes on in verse 21, he says, Therefore get rid of all moral filth and the evil that is so prevalent, and humbly accept the word planted in you which can save you. The word planted in you, the gospel planted in you, the things that you believe that you found true in the Bible, the things that Pastor Dave has planted in us Sunday after Sunday, or if you're a youth student, the things that John plants in us every Wednesday night. That gospel is, is where we're supposed to grow from. We have to find that truth that, that we believe in and then grow out of it. So I think just to wrap up, I, I took a lot more time here than I thought I would. Um, I tend to get really long-winded, so I, I hope uh, this has all been good. But I'm actually not going to go into to chapter 2 at all. We'll just talk, this is just James 1 today. But but I think if, if there's anything that I want, uh, that I, I want to be takeaways from this, I think um, it would be this. If we're going to ask God for wisdom... We need to believe that God will provide. Just that simply. If we're going to ask God for wisdom, we need to believe that he will provide, and then he will. He will give us wisdom. That, that, that's a really easy thing to give, give that God wants us to have, whether it's financially, emotionally, um, relationally. He'll give us the wisdom. All we have to do is ask and wait and believe that he'll give us that wisdom. And then um, the second thing... We need to understand that religion that God desires and accepts of us is, is looking after each other. It's caring for the people around you, whether that's your family, your neighbor, um, someone who needs help carrying in their groceries or, or for serve week this week. Those are the things that God wants of us. Those are the things that make uh, us different from the rest of the world. And then thirdly, um, when you accept the word planted in us, be quick to listen and slow to become angry. Um, it, fighting that good fight, believing that righteousness will be created in us. So thank you guys. I appreciate it. Um, appreciate those of you that have watched and are going to watch. I hope that you enjoyed this. Um, let me know if you have any questions. I, I would love to chat, um, about all things, Jesus in the Bible, I guess. But uh, yeah, just reach out if you have any questions or I need any prayer. Um, praying with you, believing you're going to have a great week. Um, come on Wednesday night. And that would be a, a great time to just get in the Word and um, listen to John's message and have a good time of corporate worship together. So hope to see you guys soon. I will see you Sunday or Wednesday or online here. Um, thank you.